A woman meets a guy online and after the two exchange some sweet words, they agree to meet. Fast forward just a couple of weeks and the scene is a hotel room. A man stands above the body of a woman. She's been stabbed 30 times, blood is all over the place. The man who seems to have murder written on his DNA will later say he feared the woman was going to reject him. But get this, the authorities knew this man was a killer. In fact, they should have seen the signs he was going to do it again. There are usually signs, and as you'll see today, they're not always exactly hidden. Ok, so we guess we shouldn't start a story and not fill in the gaps. The crime we just talked about happened recently in Canada. The authorities did take a lot of flack for it because they really should have known this guy might kill again. Going back to his earliest relationships, he had a history of violence. In fact, he was convicted of assaulting a partner years back. Then in 2006, he ruthlessly beat another partner with a hammer and then stabbed her as she lay dying. This was murder. He later said he was afraid she was going to reject him. He was of course arrested and sent to prison, but then he went from being high risk to moderate risk and in 2019 he was allowed out of prison on day release so long as he followed some protocols. He was then sent to live in a halfway house. It was around this time that his parole officer said he should be allowed to tend to his sexual needs. Since you know how the story ends, you know that this was an extremely bad idea. What happened is the guy met the woman online on an erotic massage parlor's website. They have met a bunch of times, but then it seems he formed a kind of attachment to her, or more like an obsession. Paradoxically, he killed her because he thought she might leave him. He was obviously a certified loon and a very dangerous man. Ok, so what are the signs something like this might happen? Well, in his case, there was a history of violence against women, terrible violence, the worst kind of violence. He shouldn't have ever been allowed anywhere near a relationship or at least his activities should have been monitored more closely. He was supposed to tell his parole officer about any relationships, which it seems he did. As we said, the authorities were criticized for this and admitted wrongdoing. But let's say you're the woman in the case, how would you know that this guy had murder on his mind? Well, there are plenty of resources that you can go to where experts tell you about behavior that could turn deadly. This could be behavior of both men and women, of course. One thing to notice is controlling behavior. You should know that if someone is excessively controlling, and we don't mean telling you off for forgetting to brush your teeth at night, alarm bells should be going off in your head. Let's say someone tells you what to wear all the time. This person keeps saying you dress too sexily. He's jealous. More than jealous, he's oppressive. Well, you should get out of that relationship ASAP. This is not normal behavior. It means this person has a problem, likely stemming from his childhood. If the control worsens over time, the person can't be talked to or doesn't take well to criticism, the behavior will only get worse. The end point could be violence and even murder, especially if the person feels you're going to leave. This is quite common. There are a lot of insecure people out there, but at times they might exhibit other strange behaviors, such as excessive aggressiveness during sex. Then you have stalking or threats of violence, even threats of murder. We're not talking about serial killer behavior here, that's very different, a whole different world. We're talking about people who cannot control their emotions and anger. People who may not have killed before but have it in them to kill. Perhaps you have a friend who you fear is in this kind of relationship. Sometimes the problem is that they don't talk about it, but if you find yourself saying things like, she became quiet and withdrawn, or she acts different when he's around, then this could spell trouble. Have a heart to heart with this friend when you get the chance. In all likelihood, if she's in a bad relationship with a controlling person, that person won't want her to meet you. He will be jealous of everyone, even her friends. In fact, research says that jealousy is one of the leading causes of spousal murder. Controlling and jealous people are responsible for a good chunk of murders in the world. You might think that murdering a lover or partner is only for natural born killers, but you'd be very wrong. People kill in explosive fits of temper, so called normal people, not just maniacs and psychopaths. You probably know that very often murder victims are killed by people intimate with them or friends. Take this case, for example. A really famous case in the US, it involved a NASA astronaut named Lisa Marie Nowak. In short, she liked a man, but that man was dating another woman, and this made the space woman very angry. Nowak was educated to the nth degree, she was well loved and had a happy childhood, had money, fame even, but then in a fit of rage she set off to meet that woman with what the press called a kill kit in her car. That was a bag containing a steel mallet, a long knife, a length of hose, latex gloves, pepper spray, a BB gun, and some garbage bags. You have to ask what she was planning to do with those things. Thankfully, she didn't kill the woman. She hardly even spent any time in jail, just two days. Yeah, imagine she'd been poor and uneducated, it would likely have been a different outcome. The authorities said she was planning to do serious bodily injury or death. It was later written that she was jealous and obsessed, and that's why she had almost a fatal attraction. 
One expert said this about the case, they may have murderous, rageful fantasies about that person. The difference is, she is acting on those fantasies. Murder doesn't happen often as a result of jealousy, but it still happens way too often. You should know the signs. This is a good example of someone falling off the edge. She was controlling, jealous, obsessive. Unfortunately, these signs aren't always obvious from the get-go. These types of people tend to hide their problems at the start of the relationship, and then the negative emotions tend to slowly emerge as fangs do from growing tigers. Get out before it's too late. It's what experts will tell you. Regular people don't have the equipment that neuroscientists have. They can't scan images of a partner's amygdala and hypothalamus as they tell them that they think someone else is hot and charming. In such a case, if those parts of the brain show lots of activity, this means they could be extremely jealous. According to the experts, jealous folks in this case might also have fast beating hearts along with muscle tensing and sweating. You can try that one at home. We looked at statistics, and while crime is a huge reason for homicides and sociopolitical murders are very common, much of the murder in the world is down to interpersonal conflict, meaning people being murdered by people they know because something went wrong. Often, it's jealousy. When we're talking about signs of a murderer related to criminal enterprises, well, it's complicated. Should Joey Icepick and Zagi have seen the signs before he was whacked by Tony the Wizard of Odds Trevisani? Maybe not, because killing is in most Mafia guys' playbooks. Still, as any former Mafia guy will tell you, some of those good fellows were pretty much psychopaths who enjoyed killing. They killed for fun. They weren't right in the head. What's up with those guys? What are the signs they might display? Well, in terms of serial killers, be it sexual killers or demented maniacs that enjoy murdering lots of people, there could well be signs in childhood. There's something called the McDonald Triad, which is a controversial theory that people who commit serial serious violent offenses have three things in common when they're young. Those are bedwetting until a later age, setting fires all the time, and cruelty to animals. Ok, so lots of kids do this and they turn out to be nice people who would not dream of seriously hurting anyone, although excessive cruelty to animals could be a sign that someone is taking their anger out on vulnerable things due to the humiliation they suffered in childhood. Stable kids don't generally set cats on fire for fun. Still, this might not be a sign someone will kill humans. They might become very self-aware and ashamed of their act and begin to understand why they did it. The author Peter Vronsky, who is arguably the world's most renowned writer about serial killers, has said with many of the killers he's researched, there are many themes that cross over. He kept to himself is the refrain you so often hear about serial killers. It's uncommon for a serial killer to be judged completely mad, at least in court, because people don't want this person to ever see the light of day again on the outside if they're released from a mental institution. American serial killer Herbert Mullen, for instance, thought God was telling him to kill people to prevent earthquakes from happening. With one of his victims, he cut out her organs and then spread her intestines around branches in some woods. He then inspected them for signs of pollution because he'd been told by the voices in his head that she was infected by the devil. Experts now agree he was without a doubt experiencing intense hallucinations because he had a bad case of paranoid schizophrenia. Are there signs when this happens? That's difficult to say, but if you meet someone who keeps ranting about the end of the world and the fact forces of evil are doing things only they understand, it could be a sign. Especially if that person looks lost and what he says is very frightening, or if they might be in QAnon. Just recently, a British man killed his neighbor after a long time suffering from paranoid delusions. He believed his neighbor was spreading the COVID virus for Russian President Vladimir Putin, and he also thought he was under surveillance by NASA, the CIA, and the FBI. In 2019, he was detained under the British Mental Health Act, but he was released in 2020. In 2021, he shot his neighbor to death and later died in a high-speed police chase. This is what his father said about him. Alex was mentioning NASA, the FBI, the military. In the end, I think he thought he was some sort of secret agent. He was always talking about Putin. He got really bad at one point. You cannot speak to him without him saying something about torture and that people were spying on him. So if you know anyone like this, get them some help or at least give them a wide berth for a while. Such signs are something to be concerned about. Then there's a lack of conscience, sometimes for an act someone has done, but also sometimes when they have witnessed something terrible. This could be related to psychopathy, but we say could with emphasis, so don't go thinking just because your friend laughs at news reports in which people die, he could soon be a killer. It's just a trait of some killers. In fact, they don't seem bothered at all by extreme acts of violence. The question a lot of people ask is, are we all capable of murder? It's a very difficult question to answer. You could take a person who has never committed a severe violent act, but many things come together at the wrong place at the wrong time. A lot of people who've killed say they don't remember doing it, as if they were temporarily blinded by rage. If you look closer, it's likely this person had been under tremendous amounts of stress. They might have childhood trauma issues, and possibly due to a head injury, their prefrontal cortex might not be working the way other people's do. 
Most of you will have the ability to use that bit of the brain and push back more animal instincts, but some people might not be able to do that. There's a lot of research that says trauma in childhood might affect how the prefrontal cortex develops, and since neglect and violence can be linked to poverty in childhood, this might be one of the reasons why more murders happen among poorer communities. An early sign of this could simply be someone you know who flies off into a rage very easily and seemingly cannot be brought out of it. We're not saying they'll be killers, but it's likely they have more chance of killing than someone who seems to have solid control over their emotions. We have morals and reasoning and a conscience, but we also have rage circuits in our brains that were developed a long time ago. As many a scientist has pointed out, we are hardwired to snap. Nonetheless, we generally don't snap and kill. It usually takes that perfect storm or we should say imperfect storm to blow into our lives. At times, we may need to snap in order to protect ourselves and others, but unfortunately snapping for some people happens not in self-defense. As one scientist put it, the modern world presses on the defense mechanism circuitry in ways that can lead to misfires. Try to be good, people. Don't misfire. Now you need to watch FBI interrogation techniques you can actually use, or have a look at how serial killer profilers actually catch serial killers.